Hello, everyone, and welcome to State of the Realm, your weekly Final Fantasy XIV podcast, or at least we try. Uh, we got a quick technical issue we got to take care of here at the start of the show, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's nothing you're going to see on your end. This week, luckily, having a little bit of a break made it so we have quite a few things to talk about. Couldn't secure any guests. Uh, I think you could probably think of a good old classic reason why some might not have been able to make it this week. <laughs> and others just uh, weren't able to make it, but regardless, <clears throat> excuse me. that's excuse that's me. not a reason at all. That's not, the, that's not the only thing. Some people just busy, had a hard time securing a guest for this week, but all the same, the show must go on. And I know you love Sly and I, so it won't matter too much. Today we're going to be talking about The Rising, the event that just happened, the seasonal event. We're also going to be talking about an interview that came out of Gamescom from Twinfinite, which has a couple of big topics in there. And, well, I guess we talk about it two, three times a year. Is 14 coming to the Xbox? Everyone asks every E3, so I guess we might as well bring it up again. Because every, listen, Sly, every year it says that we see an article about Yoshi talking to Phil Spencer and nothing comes So, up. So while you talk about that, I'll just go ahead and get back on the Iceworm beta. That's perfect. All right. Yeah. Uh, Hi. Why? I'm here. Sly, I didn't even do the intro and you're already saying you're here. It's like, I, I listen, fine. Yeah, Sly and I are here, by the way. Yeah. Just, we haven't done a show in a week and a half. Let's just, let's, let's, let's just intro like that. That works. That works fine. Yeah. Just get it, get it. How you doing, Sly? I'm doing pretty good. Getting ready for a uh, hell month. Starting next week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of already here for me, in a sense. Because, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, you know, you, you already brought it up. Wow, classic. Um, wasn't the reason my, my the, the person I wanted most for the show had nothing to do with Wow, classic while they couldn't while they, why they couldn't come. But um, some other guests like I couldn't 100 percent secure either. And I don't have a particular reason. But if I could if I could create one, it would probably be that. <laughs> Yeah. It's okay. Um, I tried Astral Chain today. Um, wasn't a big fan, personally. <laughs> I think com- I think combat's good. I just think it's a little too cliche anime for me. It's just a little bit too much of that going on there. Um, yeah, I tried. Uh, I tried full body today. It's pretty Catherine? good. Catherine. Mm-hmm. I thought that is that out. Nope. I I get early copies, you know, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty good. Um, remix mode is gonna take some getting used to with the Tetris blocks and everything, but otherwise, like story, new story, pretty good. Uh, new blocks. Yeah, it's it's what you think. It's Catherine, but it's different. weird. A little because we've actually got a lot of Forte stuff to talk about, but a little bit of a detour here at the beginning. I can. It's weird how like I don't find stuff like Catherine and Persona like as like as over the top cliche anime as I do stuff like Astral Chain. That's kind of weird because they are they're a hundred percent over the top cliche anime. I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because the game feels like it cares, and Astral Chain we, just kind of we says got whatever. Used to over the top. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Persona, SMT, like we've gotten used to over the top. Yeah, then I should shouldn't be bothered so much by the national chain. But anyway, yeah, it's we've we've got a hell of a month coming up. But luckily it's coming up at a time uh this was happening earlier. Okay. Uh, no, yeah, now it's happening again. Yeah, so these are this was actually why the show was a bit late, is I was having a technical issue where the meeting would cancel out and do this over and over again, and we don't know why it's happening. If we have to in the middle of the show, we may even do a retake in the first like 15, 20, if it's something that is completely, you know, in the way. Um, it's great because we haven't done the show. We didn't do a show last week. And then this week, our our program just decides it wants to crash over and over again. And we thought we had the issue fixed, but apparently not. So apologies for that in advance. Those of you listening on audio, watching on YouTube, we'll, we'll hope it doesn't happen very much. That's about it. Okay. With that, we should probably get the conversation back towards Final Fantasy fourteen. I think that was Zoom's way of saying, hey, come on, fucking move it along, please. Come on now. So Final Fantasy fourteen. we took a week off. We are hitting the point in the Final Fantasy fourteen patch cycle, which a lot of people who are new in Shadowbringers may not be used to. 
that you know you and I are mm-hmm. used to after all the years is that Final Fantasy fourteen is definitely a game best played in moderation. And so when you and I play it nonstop like we do, it's very easy to find months like September, which are packed, to kind of be a nice little reprieve. It's nice to not have to think about 14 for a little bit of time, but it's something that not a lot of people are used to. So we are going to be talking about that a little bit later into the show. So it's good that we kind of dived into that little September, but we've got a bunch of other stuff to talk about, believe it or not. Yes, we do. Because it's been a busy week. We had patch 5.08 with our first look at the Band-Aid buffs for Ninja, Samurai, and Summoner. We had um, the Rising event, which is the yearly anniversary event that usually uh, is, a, at, least, at the very least, a love letter from the developers to the player. And is sometimes a little bit of a teaser into the future. Um, we also had Gamescom. And there's an interview that came out of that that was quite interesting. There's some very big topics. And, of course... The topic you groaned about at the top of the show, where there was a Reddit post uh, about a week or two ago talking about, again, Yoshida and Phil Spencer having more talks, and we hear this every year. Sly, I feel like you want to get that one out of the way first. Please. All right, tell me. So, okay, so once again, the report is the same every time. People have been wondering when Final Fantasy XIV is going to hit the Xbox for years and years and years. Ever! And (laughs) And every year... There's at least one article somewhere that talks about Yoshida and Phil Spencer at some event, usually E3, sitting down and having prolonged discussions, which we can only assume as consumers that it would be about that specific topic. Now, Sly and I have kind of given up on this topic, but it is a topic that comes up for good. And he is, what is, what are you pouring? Whiskey. He needs whiskey. Normally, I'm the one who needs whiskey for this conversation. Sly's the one who needs the whiskey for this conversation. Sly, don't worry. It's going to be a short conversation, so you don't need a whole lot of whiskey. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll pose the question in a more formal manner, since you ha- seem to have already answered it. Sly, what is your over-under on th- those talks leading to Final Fantasy XIV on Xbox? Uh, over-under? Over-under. Like- it's just never gonna fucking happen. That's man. not an over under. <laughs> that's, that's straight fine. up. That's straight up under. That, all the way under. <laughs> that's that's just all the way under. Do you so? Do you really think that like these talks happen year by year? They don't get a little bit closer to it happening. It reaches a stalemate every time. Thus, we have we get brought back to this conversation every fucking year, and it gets old again. And I'm saying this. Xbox is not a RPG console, even though everything is, everything is, you know, multi-platform, multi-console. I get it. But do you typically know, know people, like, do you typically know the Xbox as RPG console? There is one main RPG that, like, that, well, two, technically, uh, I guess Blue Dragon, and, um... There's a few. There's one. Uh, I hope you name the other one. I hope you're going to name. Um, God damn it. See, you want? I think you want to say Lost Odyssey, but it's not that because that's the one I always, I always is, get the tune. That, that's the one I was going to go to. Lost Odyssey. Yeah, no, so, that's that's not the one, one that you want. I was going to say Enchant Arms, but uh, what what were you going to say? Well, Lost Odysseys would always come to mind for me. That's 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 yeah, the that, one that that pops out in my head when I think of the Xbox. Mm-hmm. So that's why I assume that's where you're going to go with it. There's other ones like there was mm-hmm. there was this nice era on the 360 where they tried with a bunch of RPGs and stuff. That was, t- that was like 10 years ago. Yeah, 10 years ago, and then they just gave it up. Like, once we once we got to Xbox One, it just got back to shooty shoots. Shooty shoots, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm always, I, I'm always hopeful. I've, gi- I've kind of given up, too, on the whole idea of getting Final Fantasy XIV on Xbox. I always want it to be more accessible, unless it's on the Switch. Um, then it'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was reminded of that today as I was playing Astral Chain. I was like, man, I really don't want 14 on the Switch ever. <laughs> Even this game barely runs Shit, on the it Switch. Runs better on, it runs better on PSP than I think it would on Switch. Oh, man, that's... And it's, you know... I mean, not PSP, PS Vita. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, for the remote play. And that's 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 yeah. saying something, man. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, I mean, I'm hopeful. Every year, it's got to get close. Like they have to, un- they have to understand they're having this conversation for the fourth, fifth, sixth, however many times. You're, you're optimistic for a a doomed market. 
I don't think here. Yeah, I guess that's the big thing is how worth it is it really? But I have a feeling that if we saw it released on Xbox, it'd probably do okay. There's got to be some some MMO fans out there that are that are sitting on Xbox. Oh, man, I wish I could do something. This like, oh yeah, this console's been doing all the same things. I really hope they do something different with it. And bam, works out. <laughs> Sly's just got no hope. Sly's yep. just got no hope. Well, we'll see what actually ends up happening with that. It's just, it's worth bringing up. It was another hot topic on Reddit in the past couple of weeks. So we have to bring it up whenever they talk about it. So, it's never a hot topic. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they're getting PS. Well, it, they're getting, okay. They're getting Devil's PSO Advocate. Too, Are man. you ready? If Devil's Advocate, if it does, sure. Let's say it does come out for Xbox One and. Yada yada yada. Are you ready for the Xbox limitations conversation that's going to come up every time? I, I mean, and no more than I'm ready for PS4 limitation conversations that come up every time. Like that's it's no different, really. And I've and at this point, the PS4 is not really. I mean, there are I'm sure there are limiting factors, but it's not really much of a limiting factor. A low end PC. So if someone who's trying to play on a low end PC is probably worse having a worse experience than someone who's trying to play on a PS4. To be honest, so. No, I I mean only Switch. Switch is the only one I'm prepared to have that that conversation with. Because if it does hit the Switch, that's literally a that's literally a a two and a half hour battery life walking liability. All right. Hey, you can get some dailies done in two and a half hours. You saying. you can you can probably you get all your dailies done in two and a half hours. As a matter of fact, you can do one, one expert, you know, a couple beast tribe dailies, you know, just hand some leave maps. Cuts, you know. Do some maps. You'll be all right, dude. It'll burn through the battery in even like half that time, though, if it ever happened. Okay. So that's the topic you wanted out of the way. That's what you poured the whiskey for. Now you don't need the whiskey. Yay. Yeah, still got it, too. Yeah, that's true. That's right. You still got it. Yeah, I mean, Xbox getting PSO2, man. Why can't they get, they get 14? It only took like six years too late to get. To be fair, I'd say 14 is now, at this point, six years too late to the Xbox as well. So I guess it's, it's kind of kind of even on that front. Yep. There you go. Uh, okay, so that's the easy topic number one. Next up, we have the Rising event, which is our yearly anniversary. And we'll do this one second because I don't think it'll take us very long to get through the Rising either. Um, like most seasonal events in Final Fantasy XIV, not a very long event. Again, mostly a love letter from the developers to the player. They can say various different things in various different ways. This year's one, I don't know about you, it felt sweet, but without sure. without much substance, I suppose. I agree. I agree. Um, I'm used to a little bit of substance from our rising events, whether it be, you know, uh, what was the name of the dungeon? Broken Dungeon? Uh, Cheap Dungeon. Cheap Dungeon. Thank you. Uh, to... What was last year's? Was last year's the last year's um, was when we went into Ulda where we all waited for the rising recruiter for three hours because we didn't know he wouldn't be there all the time. So mm -hmm. and then we did the five the five fate chains inside of Ulda to to uh you know re to replicate the uh the end days of 1.0. But you're right, yeah, cheap dungeon that uh, there was something we had the one time where we went to the develop the the floor. That the, and they had the entire office like redesigned around it. Uh, this one very much reminded me of the very first Rising, where all we did was a fate where we killed a few bugs that were supposed to represent RMT. And it was a whole yep. joke about how they can just delete as many bots or RMT, but they just keep coming back. But they also can't stop or they'll overrun Eorzea and shit like that. Um, it was very reminiscent of that, where it was just a very quick do this once, talk to Yoshi P, you're done kind of conversation I wonder what led to that i wonder if it's just because of how much time they're putting into 5.1 or how much you know they're traveling to gamescom and uh pax west and then they've got tokyo game show and you know they just finished making sure that shadowbringers was you know as good a launch as it could have been which all went very well then again we don't know how far ahead they plan for seasonal events so there's no uh, saying like there's no saying like hey it, it's coming soon we need to you know putting assets for the rising I, we don't know how far ahead they plan so um can't really i don't want to really blame you know their schedule their content schedule their uh traveling schedule i don't want to really blame that but yeah you know, I, I really agree it just it just felt short 
which the message, the messages we got, like, I'm not discounting that. Like, that's, that's part of the rising. It's kind of their love letter to us, the, to the community. And I did appreciate those. So I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but can we spoil? Is it okay to spoil? I guess. What, the rising event itself? Yeah. 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 So um, basically, you go talk to Yoshi P and Yoshi P sings a song and you have a really trippy dream where you see you see yourself in each iteration or each expansion of 14. I saw myself as a Sam and I, I laughed my ass off because that would never happen. Um, now, why would that never happen, Sly? I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid. No, fuck that. Mm-mm. No, either you're way. drinking the whiskey, though. I am. But either way, you know, we get a message from Yoshi P and yourselves, I guess. And then you get back, tell the, uh, tell the NPC what you saw and right, fine. And then you go back to um, Costa del Sol and help pick up trash, pick up more trash and more bottles. And each bottle has a different message from, you know, one of the dev team. Um, or an in-game character. I, or an in-game character. True. I got one from an in-game character. I forget who. And then I from I think one was from the community team. Uh, I, I think, think one of them was. was. So uh, there were 18 yeah. bottles that you could possibly get in total. There were five larges, six smalls, and seven mediums. Every time you did the quest, which was literally just walk over there, pick a bottle, come back and read it. Um yeah. You got one randomly out of out of those lists. So the large bottles were uh, in-game NPCs. Um, three of them were uh, from like random, like you know, like a, like an Alamegan Resistance member or uh, an Ishgardian Knight. One of them is from Biggs, the one from the future. I did, I did get that. One. Yeah, he's like he sent that bottle two hundred years in the past, according to what it says in there. Same way that he sent the crystal tower. To, that was probably my favorite in-game NPC one, um, just because it when that when I finished the twinning, that was a very like it, I guess kind of emotional moment, a very a very uh, lore heavy moment in a sense. So this felt like it tied in with our current expansion, and you know what, it makes sense because there was an there was. A Grand Company Knight to represent 2.0, an Ish Guardian Knight for 3.0, an Almegan Resistance member for 4.0, and to represent 5.0, they used Biggs, which I thought was was pretty cool. Um, and then one was from fellow adventurers, like, you know, other players, in a sense. Not actually, but like it says, from your fellow adventurer kind of thing. Then the small bottles are from devs that worked on um, very specific key functions or even things like your minions, which you could assume is actually from the minion team. Not necessarily from your minions, but uh, you had people like the guy who worked on Mahjong, but it's written like, I don't know if anyone will even want to learn this. But thank much to my own, you know, relief, a bunch of people were super excited for that. And those are the ones that are really cool. And then Medium is like some of the higher, like there's one from, I think, Ishikawa, one from Soken, um, I think one from Oda-san. Uh, and I can't remember who the other, th- there's seven Mediums, if I recall correctly. I don't remember who the, all of them were from. But uh, yeah, there were some really nice messages. Sokens was really funny because he talks about being locked away in like a cold, dank place working on like the sounds of the game and stuff like that. So uh, they they were cute, but the way it was done was kind of weird. I think it's only weird if you want to do it the way I wanted to do it, though. How do you want to do it? Well, I wanted to get every message once. I didn't want to just find out from other people what messages they got, which I think was the intended thing. Was that, you know, some people would probably try to open multiple, like, open more than, like, two or three bottles to finish the event. And be like, yo, what story did you get? Yeah, I got the story about this. And then it becomes a very social thing between characters. Haps, 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 haps. Yeah. I'm already, like, people have already got me hooked on Gotcha. I don't need that shit. In my, in my <laughs> rise like, I just got onto Azure Lane. I don't need that shit right now. Sly, it was fu- it was fine. I yeah, I gotta admit my 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 sense of liking slot machines and gotcha being just in Vegas a couple weeks ago was uh you know probably played into why I didn't like I still tried to get all of them, you know. I ain't doing that shit. Mm-mm. 
Yeah, it, it felt like they wanted us to, like, share the bottles that we got with other people to see, like, what they got and then, like, cross-reference it. It eventually came down to I just wanted to try and get all 18 messages myself. And uh, I got 17 of them, and I was like, you know what? I'll find the 18th one online because I do not need 500 <laughs> rising tokens. <laughs> I'm to, I was at 450, and I'm like, you know what? 450 is enough. That's a lot of that's a lot of Realm Reborn Red for the next year. I'll be I'll be good. It was like ten bottles per one token. You got ten tokens per bottle that you're at. Oh man, it was uh, it was fun, but there wasn't much teasing of things to come. It was mostly just kind of like looking back. Right. Yeah. Usually we get a teaser of some sort from the rise, and I don't think we got anything this year. All, all it was was they just kept referencing um, the light, I guess, you know, you know, like fighting it back against the light. That was part of the one of the final poems that the minstrel read. I was hoping the minstreling wanderer would be involved in some way or there'd be a reference to it in some way. Um, it does reference mm -hmm. if you've uh, beaten Shadowbringers. If you haven't beaten Shadowbringers, he actually gives you different dialogue um, for when you actually get pulled into the other realm. Uh, when you get pulled in the other realm, he calls you, oh, should I say Warrior of Darkness? But if you haven't done Shadowbringers yet, he doesn't say that to you. He just continues to call you the Warrior of Light. So uh, there's always little things like that. But yeah, I wouldn't tease much in the future. We still haven't gotten that Doom Train minion from all those years ago. So maybe they learned their lesson. Never forget. Never forget Doom Train minion. One day it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Hasn't happened yet. That was like the second. That was like the second rising. We saw that, I think, um, where it was a wind up doom train on the development floor. But yeah, uh, there was also the tales from the shadow, which I actually haven't had the time to read yet. Mm. Yeah, have you read ta any tales of the shadow? I have not. I'm just learning about it. Just the second. Well, Sly, um, I would highly advise you read it because Air Zivia is on Tuesday. Uh, you just told me today. Yeah, I, I did was... tell you that two. I did tell you in the last show we were probably doing Arizivia after the next show. Right. You just didn't remember. <laughs> and Sly, if I remember correctly, there's one question that Ethis asked you that was from a I believe a Tales of the Storm that uh, he was very unforgiving of you to not know the answer to. Right. So I would probably read Tales from the Tales from the Shadow <laughs> and try to. Avoid that situation. Oh, well. I hope so. I hope so, Sly. Okay, so with that, we don't really have much else to say about the Rising event. Short, sweet. And I like that it tied into the end of uh, the previous event. Literally, the previous event disappears in-game, and then the Rising NPC appears. And the Rising is literally cleaning up the mess from the last seasonal event, which I thought was a nice little way to tie. I would, I, I like when they do things like that. I find that little continuity there to be uh, satisfying. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Was uh, nice. There was one dialogue that, so I don't think Koji had a bottle. There's one piece of dialogue. I know he really enjoyed writing when you hand the bottle to the NPC, when you're doing the repeatable quest, she says, is that a letter in that bottle? Or are you just happy to see me? Just happy to see me. Yeah. <laughs> Koji, you just can't. Oh, Koji. You just can't get a you can't you can't go one season away without a dick joke, can you, Koji? Just can't do it. You just can't do it. And the thing is, that implies that it's like in our pocket, like leaning towards like one side. It's like <laughs> the fact that you're trying to imagine this. Well, otherwise, if I'm just holding a bottle, why would she say that? <laughs> if I'm just holding, it's got to be in a pocket or something, you know. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. Try it. That's it. All right. <laughs> Next, we've got 5.08. Mm -hmm. Which 5.08's unfolding showed me a lot of people did not pay attention to the previous live letter. Because I had a lot of people ask me, when is the patch? When is the patch? What I'm really excited for the patch. And I'm like, these are this is a band-aid patch. Like to just give like potency and make these jobs like a little stronger while they wait for like overall balance changes in point one. And uh oh boy were these changes something, man. Sly, I'm willing to say now that Final Fantasy 14 might be the least balanced that's ever been. 
as a 5.08. Before 5.08, maybe. After 5.08, definitely. <laughs> so, Sly, do, are you? Did you? You read through 5.08? Mm-hmm. You saw them ninja buffs. Mm-hmm. Saw them samurai buffs. I saw them summoner buffs. In, in buffs. the words of Faros, this is my birthday. <laughs> is it my birthday dude that's ninja ninja just had all their name days come at once with that one so yep. um 5.8 was just a bunch of potency buffs to ninja some potency buffs to samurai and removing some tediousness from summoner just a little bit just like if you want to cast ruin or something and there's no dots on a target uh or it like you know doesn't punish players who screw up with having the dots up you know it raises the floor just a teensy bit Mm. Sly, do you want to know what the result of those balance changes were? What's that? Ninja might actually have more DPS than Samurai now. <laughs> if not, like, they're way too close to each other. <laughs> so Samurai is now shit on by all three of the other melee jobs <laughs> and not just two of them. <laughs> <laughs> we just had this conversation the other fucking week. Fuck my entire life. Now you just made Ninja even better. What the fuck is that? Yeah, you said that jokingly, and it happened. That's a sly Jesus if I've ever seen him. Yeah. This is a problem. I'm talking, about Sam's. I'm talking about Sam's. Ninja's well, Ninja's happy. Ninja's very happy. Ninja's as happy as they're gonna get, because they still play like shit, but you know. It's it's, it's considering what they put themselves through. It's now it's paying off a little bit, right? Meanwhile, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm just I'm just I'm just the Michael Jackson popcorn meme right now. Just looking at everybody else. I prefer to be the uh, the guy who sits on the couch and he just pulls the popcorn out from the bottom. I prefer that one personally as opposed to the thriller popcorn. It's just like. Staring at the movie that has him in it, and no one seems to be commenting on that in the uh, music video. So yeah, this is uh, this is getting out of control. I, Five point one actually has uh, a lot more work cut out for it than even I initially anticipated because everything in this is a band aid. None of it is meant to be the permanent state of the jobs. They've already said they're reworking certain th- excuse me certain things in five point one. Um, for example, Shoha Ninjutsu. Summoner, they didn't. They haven't made mention of anything else, but we'd like to assume that there'd be some additional changes there and changes to other jobs as well. 5.1's balancing-related adjustments are now going to be the biggest thing under people's eyes because tanks are feeling okay. Want a couple things here and there, like Living Dead, maybe getting like a healing buff or Storm's Eye getting a duration increase. Um, healers, but some people still want Astro to get a little bit more love. You know, they feel that White Mage and Scholar are doing okay. Astro is doing okay, but some people are just not yeah. enjoying the amount of effort they have to put forth on that specific job when the other two jobs can put forth way less effort and do just as well. Um, uh, even though Astro is, I'd, I'd, dude, I'll take an Astro. Listen, do anything you want. I'll take, Sly already had this discussion two weeks ago. Yeah, I'll take an Astro. That's what you're talking about. All right. I'm a dancey boy. I just give other people better DPS anyway. That's, that's all anyone cares about. Again. But then Again. I look at the, the, and then I look at all the DPS, and things are all over the place. Sly, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Listen, Mister Dragoon, Dragoon is on the list of things that have been caused that caused these problems initially. All right, that job's way too fucking strong. Monk, Dragoon, and Black Mage were probably the jobs that were like over the top, a bit crazy. Um, to be fair, Black Mage has like kind of been over the top for a while. I think it I think it hit a critical point in the more recent patches because it almost makes like people are now questioning both the other magic DPS in terms of people don't want to put through you know, get uh, you know, they want their hand to fall off from playing summoner and red mage to fall asleep. Um and the performance there is is while you know you could be content with any job, it's just the the gaps between certain jobs and certain roles, and then looking at certain jobs versus other roles like the ranged physical, they're all over the place in terms of overall potency. And now that Ninja's a god too, it's getting more and more out of hand, especially for physical range and for Red Mage Summoner. Those five jobs, those the five jobs affiliated with those, more so than Samurai are just being looked at and they're going, 
that's not gonna work, is it? <laughs> They're like thousands upon thousands of average DPS behind across like different percentiles and stuff. Um, like Sly, did you know that a 50 percentile black mage, meaning you are playing like not super well, but you're not like screwing it up, you're like average, right? Mm -hmm. That's like as good as a 90 to 95 percentile red face. <laughs> Someone who's playing near the absolute peak of the job. And so that's, uh, that's a bit concerning. And then no one even looks at Dancer. <laughs> They're just like, hey, you. Hey. You need something? Hey. Hey. Listen, hey. I'm already this far ahead. If I'm going to be here, just dance part of me. Okay. Yeah, just we give good? me a dance part. I brought you, I brought you here. I brought you here. Give me a dance partner. <laughs> I brought you here. Yeah, there's just this mountain to climb in terms of uh, in terms of balance. So I'm I'm very curious about five point one. Uh, same, same. Um, some of the some of the uh, nerfs that I saw coming haven't come yet. Fine, I'm still like, yeah, five point one. They're there are going to be some nerfs, like especially to my job, especially to, to Dragoon. I think monks. They don't touch sooner, it sooner. Sooner they see some some nerfs than even you are. Mm, yeah, but. yeah, yeah. If they don't touch it, I mean, great. I'm 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 fine. I don't ask for much anyway. So do your worst, man. I just I'm wondering what got them to this currently. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? You're it's wondering. Just, what it's just crazy, man. This point? You're wondering what brought us to this point. Are you serious? I'm wondering how we got to the point where monk and black mage are like tied and or one is doing better than the other given specific circumstances. And samurai is like, hey, remember when I was supposed to be the selfish DPS? That motherfucker's got mantra brotherhood. This is bullshit. <laughs> Dragoon's like, don't forget that I have I and Litany, and I'm like, we're pretty close. It's like, thanks! Thanks! I have Trick Attack! Fuck you! Alright? Tied all three of you! Alright? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Range physical, you're like, it's okay. We know. We know. We know. So it's okay. They they bring us, but they don't, they don't really care. It's fine. We know. Alright. As someone who plays range, I swapped to range physical this expansion. My fucking luck, right? Oh, I won't play monk this exp. Oh, well, there you go. It's fucking fate, just punching me in the dick repeatedly. Just had to switch. Just had to switch. Listen, they'll fix it. <laughs> I hope. Yeah, right, they will. One can hope, right? Because otherwise, finding this ultimate group's about to be a lot more difficult. <laughs> Like, yeah, hey, listen, you better learn monk quick. I'm like, better gear it quicker. That's the bigger problem we got right here. You better give me fucking everything as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, so 5.1 is going to be <sighs> hell of a thing to watch for that. But 5.1 is going to be a lot to watch anyway. 5.1 is really almost like expansion launch in regards to content structure. It's going to be massive. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. You were hot. Your high. Yeah, and we're going to actually get to talk about that a little bit because one very, very popular topic rose up last week when we didn't do a show. And luckily, the full interview that covered that topic is out. This is an interview by uh, Twinfinite. We'll be including it in the comment section on YouTube. It's something you may have recognized. It's actually on the Reddit front page if you want to go check it out right now. The full interview, which started with the topic of breaking down the barriers between data centers. Something that sounds like as much a pipe dream as the game being on Xbox, but apparently is far closer to being realized. <laughs> uh, so we're going to cover that topic first because it was, uh, they added, I guess they teased the, the full interview coming out by just posting that one question and that one answer. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to scroll down to it right here. Luckily I have a text only version because I will say that uh, it has like, thousand ads thousand um, ads like Jeez. my browser was like yo you may not have an stop. ad blocker but you might stop. need one and i don't like to advocate stop. for that please stop yes uh stop. let's let's see here let me find it there's restoration of ishgard where is uh, physical data centers here we go so uh 
the interviewer asked when we asked when we talked two or three years ago you mentioned that the ultimate plan was to do away with the barriers between data centers and let everyone visit all servers are you still working on that yes was pretty much the answer uh they can't magically make it happen but they're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel in regards to coming up with a solution for that because obviously they're still all physically separate data centers and if they want you to be able to hop from the North American to the Japanese to the European servers freely, a lot has to happen on the back end to make that a reasonably smooth transition because your ping's going to adjust, your actual signal and its direction needs to all be relocated and shit like that. But they said they're, they're, the light is at the end of the tunnel for finding out, for figuring this out. Uh, so patch-wise, when are you thinking? I mean, not before six. Thinking, this, like, There's no okay. way. I, I listen. Okay. I'm shocked enough. We're getting the a Realm Reborn rework before six point oh. I really didn't think we would. It's, assuming it stays on schedule for five point three. Um, this, there's, I, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. Still, this, this sounds like an expansion selling level thing, like world visiting was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, even if it were to be ready beforehand, they'd probably like release it like April, May, and then expansion release whatever it would be ready for that kind of release like you know like a like a 5.58 kind of release schedule would be something i'd expect dude hunts are gonna be uber fucked when they do <laughs> dude hunts are already insane right now because instances are still around if they do that it's gonna be unfucking believable <laughs> we're gonna need more instances <laughs> Oh, no, I I don't know, dude. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to happen. But, dude, that's crazy to think that we might actually, like, you and I could finally play together <laughs> on two different data centers. Hey, Sly, listen, right? I, I'm a dancer. You want dance partner, right? You better not do the fucking fake excited bullshit, all right? No, no, no. See, this is what's going to happen when, when we do this. I'm going to bring you into my party. Oh, you're going to make a party finder group. Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to do Waffle House together, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you're just going to give you, you're just going to give somebody else fucking dance partner. Yeah, you're right. Bitch, I'm going to try you. you. I'm brought you. Yeah, but if they do more than you're you, I'm going to them. God. If they do more than you, they're getting it. I want you to know that. <laughs> that's that's a Okay, I can understand that. That's a that's a, you know, keep non pulls kind of decision but no no people other people don't do that i'm the one looking at numbers and i'm like bitch i should have that shit what's wrong with you you see this shit you see this i can tell you this much that the ninja that i've been playing with he's getting it next week because <laughs> he's gonna he's a monster so he's already been doing pretty good despite you know playing ninja so it's gonna only get better from there as far as i'm concerned it's all right, Sly. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to seeing if they can uh, get this underway. Uh, let's see if there's any. Well, uh, wait, what? Well, one thing in regards to what we have now with uh, world travel, yeah, certain certain adjustments do need to be made. Um, like small quality of life, like, but people don't under, yeah, uh, like? but people, but people don't realize that for maps, for example. You can go to other, can go to other worlds. Yes, and join their map parties. Yes, yet you but, are still yeah, locked in the PF. Yeah. You are still locked in the PF on your own world. Yeah, so, someone basically they well yeah, so they need to visit your world. So here's the thing. Here's why I don't think we'll ever have a different solution to that. Um, it's a simple solution. It's not because of the way that it inter the way that cr a cross world party is made systematically is uh very awkward because you can't world visit in a cross world server you can't world visit in a party because it needs to move your entire character data to a new server which would drop you from the party that's fine but that's why you can't you just do it <laughs> they would let you know what server they would let you know what server the party is on on and you would just I mean, it would just make sense for you to travel to that server and join. Just it. Like, so, so just allow us to announce what server we're on, what server we're on, and say, "Hey, come to Behemoth." 
we're doing the map party. You know, so you yeah. okay? So actually, this sounds like something that might be resolved with that new social thing, circles. This actually, this the, uh, based on like what we could tell from what we talked about in the last show with circles, that sounds like something circles would resolve. The party finder itself probably won't ever allow you to advertise for as that would have to mean that the party finder would have to. You know how right now it's it's data center world private. It would need to be data center every single world listed and then private. Not unfeasible, but also crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's just that you, you have to be making a party finder on your own world. And nobody can join it from another world. And if even if they could, they'd have to leave the party to come to your server to do it anyway. Which kind of undoes mm -hmm. the whole point. <laughs> so, it's... Uh, You'd be able to see it, but then you'd still have to race to the server and hope to fill the party for it. So I think circles, I think a map I mean, circle. It's half, a, half the parties anyway, so. Yeah, which means it's really no different from the way it is now, though. Like right now, it's, you right. you know, anyone who you want, you have a cross-world link shell, for example, which again is why I question circles. And you go, hey, map party on Behemoth. Anyone wants to come, you know, hop over to Behemoth. It's just I don't think the party finder is gonna work in the solution for that that isn't done with a cross world link shell or a circle. Personally, I'm not optimistic that it would. But traveling, being able to freely take my main over to the JP data center is something I would do in a heartbeat because I loved the time that I spent on the JP data center, raiding on the JP data center. I'd like to do more of it, but of course I have to level all these characters across all these different data centers, all these different servers, and. I can do it. it. Doesn't take me very long, two, three days max, probably, to be in like a comfortable situation on any of those characters. But because I already have level seventy, that is on most of them. But it's still, I'm not super motivated to do it. I'd rather have this like very succinct solution. And uh, you should have gave a little bit more context on it. Um, he's like, for example, these circles are the Japanese, North American, and European. So he actually drew, physically drew circles, actually pictures of them on the, uh, on the actual website. Inside them, we have logical data centers like Crystal, Ether, and Primal for the North American. Inside each logical data center, we have different worlds. At the moment, you could travel between those worlds with the world visit. We're now trying to link the logical data centers. The next step would be to break the barriers, and the barrier between logical data centers is really thick, and we need some magic to break them. Uh, we need something really powerful like a Heidelin kick. <laughs> that's a sundering, by the way. That's that's not just like a breaking of barriers. That's a splitting of you. It's the servers, as far as I'm considered, are the equivalent of a post Heidelin kick. They're all separated, you know. So I think he's got it. Uh, uh, Odasan's probably like that's not how it works. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure Odasan is. Yeah, Do you actually, think they write this into the. They would actually write this into the lore. No, <laughs> not a chance in hell. Not a not a remote chance in hell. It's easy to do from the uh, from the login screen. Once you're in game, sending that much data across to another physical location that is that is rough. That is that is super rough. It just proves that yeah, Yoshi P's an ass here. That'll be all right. Uh, I like that the the last one um, inverse schematics character physically adapted to the terrain, sort of standing on a slope. His knees and ankles would bend dynamically to keep his feet on the ground. Now, if I stand on a slope or across steps of a staircase, one of my feet will simply float. I'll admit it's a bit of a pet peeve. Is there a chance to reintroduce this feature? Yoshida's answer was, it's technically possible if you're okay with crappy server responses like 1.0. <laughs> <laughs> I love that answer. That That is that is a great, great answer. I love it. <laughs> and he's just like... Do you use the word 1.0? I'm gonna say the word crappy. All right. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, don't expect inverse kinetics. I read that and I was like, I like that. Use the proper word for it. You don't want to go back to that era, do you? <laughs> he just like gives him like a glaring look, like you don't want to go back to that, do you? Again, could be done, but it makes raids diff really difficult. You're going to be hit by the attacks you thought you evaded. I mean, that shit happens now, like half the time now, anyway. Yeah, but that's because you're a dragoon, Sly. No, it's just bad ping. Because you're a dragoon. Sure. Let's Your just ping is just worse because you're, it's like built into the job. 
really, even though I'm using uh using uh what the fast or whatnot. It sure. doesn't change that it's built into the job, man. Why do you think they die so often? Why do you think that's the meme? It's not that it has nothing to do with the animation lock. You just have more ping. You just naturally have it. It's okay, Sly. Not everyone reads all the passive traits. <laughs> that one's like tucked away in the corner at like Comic Sans, like, but like negative five font size. It's okay. Sorry. Uh, the rest of the interview has a few other things, mostly about the release of Shadowbringers. How did it go? Was there a, was there a big Yoshida moment where everyone was cursing his name? No, it was just them talking about how smooth the launch actually went, which, you know, I can agree. Uh, surprisingly, again, we, we've brought it up in the past. It was an incredibly smooth launch overall. Even the login queues weren't too terribly bad most of the time. You know, sometimes a little bit more than we wanted, but definitely could have been a lot worse. But something else pops up here. Changing the loot system for dungeons, apparently. Updating dungeon loot system. Um, so that it's easier to obtain the drops you specifically want from dungeons. Um, which I'm wondering if that... So, I guess we should read the answer here. Uh, mm -hmm. he, first of all, Yoshida says he actually doesn't want to do any more tokens. He's, like, tired of tokens. <laughs> like, you know, token systems for, like, every single thing for loot. If we made a single token type usable for all dungeons, players would find out the most efficient dungeon... If we try to create a specific one for every dungeon, Odasan has to name them, and I don't think he wants to do that. And then it would probably take up all your inventory space. <laughs> so, a lot of pretty reasonable responses there, but um, items might drop per player, so personal loot. Or you might be able to make uh, actually pick an item of your choice. So maybe get like a coffer at the end of it, and then, you know, it allows you to just kind of, you use it, and it becomes the piece, kind of like the way the Eden stuff works, in a sense. Um, do you think that might be one of their possible proposed solutions for people being um, undergeared for dungeons? They did say they wanted to approach that differently and maybe making items more readily available in dungeons so people don't feel like they have to run it a million times to get the gear to like feel like they're not that far behind. Yeah, I'm, I'm not speaking for myself. I'm speaking for how a new player might actually look at you know why they haven't bothered to upgrade any gear going through the leveling system. I'm thinking back to my experience in from 70 to 80. And like the stuff I did get, like I really, I really wasn't lucky, but I wasn't unlucky either. I felt like I had a, you know, good enough, good enough gear to where I would confidently get through the dungeons that I did. So in all honesty, I, I really, I really feel like this is kind of a non-issue. I mean, it's an issue. I get where you're coming from. I get where they're coming from. But at the same time, um, well, fuck. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, the question is actually specifically in regards to glamour gear from specific dungeons. The interviewer actually shows him a picture. He actually pulls up the XIV app to show him his inventory. <clears throat> and all the loot that he got from running the dungeon 40 times and not a single tank piece from Gimlet Dark. Hmm. And he's the tank, so obviously if, he, if a piece drops, he's going to need the piece. So the fact right. that he didn't get it means in 40 dungeon runs, he didn't get a single piece. But that could also play into other aspects of the game as well. True. So I'm just wondering if... I'm, I'm wondering what their... Like, what is their priority? Like, is their priority for glamour availability is their priority making upgrading gears or going through the main story a little more, uh, not even through the main story, but the, I guess those, those level humps, like when you go from like, cause it seems like most people, when they have those dungeon experiences where someone's like way under geared for a dungeon, a lot of the time it's the first dungeon in an X pack, like, like a steel vigil or a, uh, a whole minster switch. Like everyone's like, I went in a whole minster switch today and the dude was in full I two thirty, And I'm like, that is definitely mostly laziness, but like also, what? It's just a trend that I noticed. Yeah. So I'm just curious what the overall goal is. That's another thing added to five. Add that to the fucking list of 5.1 stuff that's happening. Because that's another thing that's listed. for. This is insane how many things are listed for 5.1 at this rate. We've been over them a few times, Sly, and it's... Uh, 
It's, it's going to be a huge fucking patch. It sure is. Um, there's also a few questions in here about Emmett Selk, which, of course, with Oda-san there, you know, talking about origins of the Asians and stuff like that. And then they get to talking about the restoration of Ishgard, which is another 5.1 element that's been relatively shrouded in mystery at this point. Mm-hmm. And uh, they they confirmed, obviously, it's been confirmed, we will have a live letter on September 15th at Tokyo Game Show. And uh, Yoko Taro okay. will be the special guest for that. Um, that is going to be our patch 5.1 part one preview. And I think we know what their preview. <laughs> We're going to get a, hopefully a nice peek at your hot dark apocalypse when it comes to that. But I'm sure there's going to be other things among that. Restoration of Ishgard, however, they're not sure when they want to talk about it. If they want to talk about part one or part two, because there's going to be a massive overhaul. Massive overhaul of hand of land. Hand and land. Hand and land, yeah. Mm. And that's more interesting to me, because I'm not of the opinion hand and land really need an overhaul. I think they are what they are, and while I think you can make them less tedious at certain, like 1 to 50, for example, I don't know how much they need an overhaul, unless they just feel like it's become too easy for those that are really, like, those that are dedicated. In the words of Ash, crafting is dead. Yeah, and I'm wondering how much of this quote overall is simply because they need restoration of Ishgard to like be more compelling content or more difficult specifically for crafters. Guys, how much is it because they've taken on enough debt from just trying to update crafters and gatherers across expansion to expansion, and they kind of need to reapproach now, them like they have the combat jobs? Now, do you think this overhaul is making it even more accessible to everybody because? Along with this overhaul, you got to remember there's the the synthesis. Shut the fuck up. Which is, hey, hey, it, it's there. I don't have to say it. Everybody read the fucking the the fucking live letter, digest and everything. They said it, not me. It's, it's just there. So, do you think they're making it more accessible to kind of coincide with this? I feel like the only big thing they still have remaining, and it's not, I don't know how much it's even prevalent because, again, I haven't kept up with like crafting in general. I leveled them, but I'm not like keeping up with the way that crafters actually approach it, is how important it is to level more than one. I think from one to 50, most people still agree you need to level most of them from that point. And then after that, people say you can just take one to 80. You know, you, can take, you don't need all of them to 80, you know, but all of them to 50 and then get But you kind of do. And at the same time, you kind of do because you want to be self-sufficient kind of thing, which is right. fine. But I'm, I'm just I'm wondering what it is. They're re- are they are they trying to are they making any sort of efforts against Omni crafting? Are they trying to improve the early game? Are they trying to just throw the whole thing into a basket, toss it in the closet and just buy a new one? Like, I don't I don't know what it is there. Their, their goal isn't made entirely clear here, and it probably won't be made clear until Tokyo Game Show, because they said that 5.1, or the 5.1 Part 1 preview, they will probably focus on crafting and gathering, instead of talking about Restoration of Ishgard, which they would save for Part 2. Good. So, That's I want to know where that goes, because 5. it's again, 5.1, I'm calling it Shadowbringer's actual launch, like, Shadowbringer's launch was great, you know, I enjoyed Eden, I enjoyed the story, I've enjoyed pretty much everything, but everything in 5.1 sounds expansion level. In a sense, minus how many new areas and story quests they'll probably be. Right. So I'm just I'm just blown away by every interview is like this is 5.1, this or 5.2. This is like it's just it's crazy. And then on top of that, they said 5.2 is gonna have even more stuff for disciples of hand and land in regards to like work that they're doing. It's like since this change will be significant, <laughs> we're muling on when to talk about Ishgard. It's just, it's nuts, man. I'm hoping for recipe adjustments. I mean, they did say that there were going to be adjustments to certain. Yeah, recipes. yeah. They, they, they obviously, mention, there's that. But, you know. They didn't mention Weaver. So, yeah, I, like, naturally, I think there's going to be recipe adjustments in terms of the number of mats, um, specific, you know, gather rate of mats, I guess, for uh, in-game. I don't know. 
we'll see. Well, it could also just be how tedious a lot of them are. Like for Weaver, you know, needing th- needing three of this material to make one of this material, but needing three of the second material, which means you need Weaver's not, not the only yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. They're not the only one, but I think that's kind of like what we were talking about a couple weeks the, ago. The, the base, yeah, the base example. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there's there's that. Yeah, and that's that's... I, I'm curious because I actually do want to gear craft. I do want to gear crafters and gatherers. They did also confirm you can use Restoration of Ishgard to level crafters and gatherers as well. Yeah. That is confirmed in there, which I I think really 1 to 50 is the only place that needs Jesus. any more help. I think it's easy enough across the rest of the board, but even still, that's... If that's the case, then fuck, this just made it, like, it... Shadowbringers made it real accessible with facets, the... E- insane amount of xp you get from facets as well as like custom deliveries gc turn-ins it is stupid easy now i'm just yeah well i'm just curious like what level ranges we're talking about here because i have to imagine they mean like there's going to be peasant level stuff that you can do to help ishgard for like low level crafters because they specifically say we want to make sure that you don't have to be a high level crafter to participate, even though they will have the really difficult recipes, the the seasonal leaderboards, the festivals after Ishgard's actually been rebuilt. We're of course expecting a housing area after Ishgard has been rebuilt. Um, that they still want low level, they still want lower level, but how low? You know, fifteen, right. fifty. Where's going to be? Because I'd imagine to restore Ishgard, they, you know, they are under the precipice that the player, at least as a combat job over level 50. So I'm wondering how they view crafting and gathering because it's more of a secondary thing. So there's a there's a lot of questions. These live letters need to happen now. They're happening in two weeks, but I need them now because there's so many fucking questions that we have about 5.1. Hmm. Now, with that, we do have to talk about the fact that at the top of the show, mm-hmm. we brought up a bunch of other games that we're looking at for the month of September. Our entire show started on the precipice of things to hold us over till 5.1. Now, you and I like to have this discussion occasionally about lulls yeah. in content with Final Fantasy XIV, because Final Fantasy XIV has a breadth of, of goals you can choose to accomplish, but you don't often choose to do them all endlessly. So auxiliary goals, I know I'm working my way back to 200 million. Gil, I'm back at 185. Thank goodness. Uh, thank you, Maps. Really appreciate that. Because And hunts. Hunts have been god tier, especially while they're still instanced. But there's a very interesting discussion to have because we have one thing unique to this discussion this time around, Sly. What's that? Wow Classic just released on Tuesday. What is that? Why fourteen is fucking drier than HGTV at three AM? Well, I mean, every, I'm almost anyone who's playing an MMO or who's played an MMO in the last ten years, you know, anyone who's they have some memory of WoW or have some curiosity for WoW. There's no doubt about that. You know, WoW Classic is going to drive away a ton of people within the first couple of weeks who are just not interested in the slower paced game. But a lot of people want to play a specific role in history. But that's not the discussion that we're really trying to have right now. Okay. I logged in. I logged in for raid night, and Yulmore was popping. And I did a raid train, and that shit was popping. But or a hunt train, sorry. But in the mornings, no, Yulmore is a fucking ghost town in the mornings for me right now, more so than it usually is. Same. And it's like, and I had to type this in my um, well, fuck Wednesday because I tried. I tried Tuesday and Wednesday because those are days I usually on for reset and you know take care of everything cap tomes and everything um for weekly reclears and everything here's my experience log in hey let me just go ahead and take get take care of my money to you know that get into an e1 party do our positions okay do a pull wipe done Next party. Do our positions. Wait. Are you fucking serious? I had to stand here. This is what the other guy said. Are you fucking serious? I had to stand here. Leaves. Done. Um, And then I wait 
for like a million years to make my own party. I say, fuck this shit. I'll come back tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow's a better day. Wednesday. E1. First party. Positions. Everything's okay. Uh, no, it's not. Done. Fuck it. I'll make my own party. No, 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 no. It happened again, actually, before that. I don't like this fucking position. I'm out of here. Done. Okay, I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. Here's what I typed in my description. <sighs> E1S reclear, weekly reclear. Okay, seriously. Healer Southeast and Southwest for orb lasers, not the spinning orbs. Common sense did not leave for WoW Classic. Let's get this shit done. <laughs> Hey, why don't you use Zeno's thing? That's the healers would go south and west then. Yeah, yeah, the the one for everything. Yeah, I should have thought about that. One for every, one for everything. I mean, we were already doing one for everything, but the short two minute video is perfect for E one. Yeah, but still, like I, I just kept it fucking simple. Common sense did not leave for WoW Classic. Let's get this done. And still, you know, Sly, so I'm gonna I'm gonna present you with a with an actual a mind blowing fact. Yeah, are you ready? I don't know. I don't know if you're ready for this slide. Okay. It has wow. Well, wow, well, classic has nothing to do with common sense here, common sense there. You're in the party finder. That's that's the end the of previous end. weeks. I have not had this fucking issue. This was an issue this week. Coincidentally, when wow classic, I and I said I told everybody in chat. I'm like, look, I it honestly isn't wow classic, but. To be honest, Yomor is fucking dry right now. PF is fucking dry right now. You know, it's funny. I had a login queue last night. <laughs> uh, two nights ago. I had a login queue for Gilgamesh. So I'm feeling all right. <laughs> I mean, I have a login queue every fucking time I log in, but it's like a 10. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's been the same since like two weeks in the Shadow Ring. It's been like a, a, a 20 queue. Like it's anywhere from like, you know, 10 to 25 or something like that. Still there. Still there. Yeah. They're just not in Yulmore. <laughs> They're logging into 14 and being like, okay, I have two games that if I go AFK in, I'm going to get kicked out after 30 minutes. This one I have to wait six hours to get back into. This one I'll wait 30 seconds. I'll log into 14 and open WoW here on the side. <laughs> but no, so this isn't even the discussion I wanted to have, Sly. You're just, you're just venting your personal frustrations about the weekly party finder, which you could have had any week, to be fair. <laughs> but I didn't. But you it, didn't. It went semi smoothly other weeks. This week is just fucking terrible. I'm like, you know what? This may be a bad week. You know, other games, Wild Classic, you know, shit, getting ready for September. It may be a bad week. September could be nutty. Oh, excuse me. Um, but the big thing is, is one one of the big things about Classic WoW and why it was such a big demand, you know, and why it's been kind of a, a controversial take in regards to like how it's actually going to pan out with you know people who are used to this generation of gaming is the amount of time it's it takes to do that <laughs> because it's, it's a hell of a drug it's i mean for a lot of people classic wow is the reason they play mmos nowadays like vanilla wow yeah, is the reason it's just a hell of a drug yeah so and it's something regardless of how you feel about world of warcraft you have to respect that it while it it does have the ever quests and the dark age of camelot and the final fantasy 11s and the ultima online's before it that it is in many ways, a very big piece of history. And one of the big things about it is it was more time consuming. It's Final Fantasy XI rem reminiscent of, you know, levels of time consumption that it'll take to do things. Um, the amount of actions you perform are less, you know, per second than a lot of games nowadays. And it just takes a while to do things. You wa It's World of Walkcraft for the most part because there's no flying. And it, there's no flying in classics. So it's World of Walkcraft for the most part. And uh, the question I guess I want to pose to you is Final Fantasy XIV, very modern, very accessible, something anyone can hop in, play for 15 minutes, two hours, whatever the amount of time, and get something reasonably done. Versus an MMO that's built for back in the time of 2004, where people may have had more time things weren't as accessible and it takes it just strictly takes longer to do things do you think 
that that is going to have an impact on how people see other MMOs like Final Fantasy XIV going into the next year or two? Do you, or do you think that people are going to be like, this looks boring as shit? Because I've seen a lot of that with Final Classic when I've been streaming it. <laughs> Although I'm playing a Ret Paladin, which really doesn't help. Do you think that's going to impact the way, approach that modern games, modern MMOs look to hold players? Naturally, just making things take longer. No. Not at all. Um, I feel like we're in a modern age and people people have a taste for nostalgia naturally but in terms of actual quality of life and gameplay and everything they don't want that experience i mean yes you're playing wow classic you you're reliving the nostalgia but in terms of your current experience experiences like you know 14 current wow no, we don't want that. I don't want. To be that. fair, I don't want current WoW either. I'll I'll, I'll say this right <laughs> now: not not having Titan forging and Azerite traits and all that shit is a, actually a breath of fresh air for me, and re- specifically in regards to World of Warcraft. Thank fucking Christ. But yeah, I get I get what you're saying. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean that's that's actually the big thing is that a lot of the current generation of MMOs were built on what World of Warcraft initially did, and it became the kind of right. growing standard. For them to go all the way back, you know, it's just a question of it happened once, does it happen again? Do people then take the step back and look at longer, you know, duration activities that are less accessible unless you put in a lot of time? And thus, people tend to put more time in because it takes them longer to get to the, the goal at the end. That's the big thing I want to see unfold with Classic WoW. Because I know... I my brain is begging for me to do something else when I'm playing classic WoW. But I also know that if I don't if I don't fucking go and kill those ghouls over there, then I'm gonna be thinking about killing those ghouls because I'm gonna have to kill those ghouls eventually. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Like right now, I'm not logged into WoW Classic. I've given up on playing it for the day because it's gonna take me six hours to queue in, essentially. 8,000 person queue is about 300 minutes. Yeah, that sounds about right. Is WoW the Popeyes of MMOs right now? What does that mean? The, you don't know how, uh, like, there's the craze of the Popeyes chicken sandwich and everybody's going fucking crazy and standing in line, lines outside of Popeyes and shit. Like, you probably haven't seen it, haven't heard it. Oh, no, I heard LA was running out of chicken. Are y'all running out of chicken? <laughs> Well, when you give away so much free chicken, might you run out of chicken? I thought you were going to go with like a Szechuan sauce, like Rick and Morty kind of comparison there. No, no, no. This is this is fucking Popeyes. People are waiting six hours for this shit. Like people are, people are going fucking crazy. They're attacking folks. What? I can't get in Wild Classic. Fuck this shit. I th- it's, wait, I thought you said mild classic for a second because you were talking about the chicken flavors. Did you say wow classic or mild classic? I did. Wow. Wow classic. I thought you said, I was like, oh, I thought you were naming a flavor of the, the Popeye's classic chicken. I was like, this is too, now the analogy is way too good. Oh, man. Now I want fried chicken. <laughs> and I don't know if I got to yeah. go wait on a line, and I sure as fuck ain't. That's right. Mel made these homemade chicken tacos, and I had those left over. Yeah, shredded spicy chicken with some corn on the side. That's corn on the cob. There you go. Salt pepper. With that. Oh. Fuck that Popeyes. Yeah, fuck that Popeyes. I got these chicken tacos right here. That's right, right. About. See, same thing. Same thing. You have, you have fourteen. Fuck that wild classic. You can do other shit. <laughs> hey, listen. It's here's the thing. Like, I'm, I'm okay with it. I kind of, I kind of understand what. It oh, is so you're okay with the queue? You're okay with all that? There are that many people playing. There are that many people playing. I'm not gonna sit here and be like they like they even increase the capacity. It is kind of just I've accepted it, but I also can just go do something else, (laughs) and and that's kind of the big thing for me. It's like 14 if I ever want to log in and do something like I because I actually all week I've been like craving to get on and do some maps because I'm still getting closer and closer to the 200 million goal. I'm halfway done with the achievement for getting 20. Fifth floors. I want to go back and work on the Stormblood ones. I want to gear up my 
Paladin and work on some of the remaining Primal solos. Those are all auxiliary goals. Like there are tons of things that I have that I want to prioritize in 14 right now, but I'm mm -hmm. not because I'm I'm jumping on something that's, you know, very, very excitable, very hype because it's a part of MMO history. And I feel like I at least owe it to myself as a content creator to as much as I don't think it's something long term for me to at least give it its due diligence, you know? I feel like I owe it that that respect in a sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that being said, I am itching to get back on the 14 because I can at any point hop in and do something and get it done. I'm seeing, I'm desiring that more now because of the inaccessibility of WoW Classic, whether because of the queue or because of how long it'll take me to do stuff. And so I'm like conflicted in, so, in like a very unusual way that I don't really know how to describe any more than I have thus far, except with your chicken analogy, apparently. Popeyes, is the KFC, wow. the KFC have lines? Or is it just Popeyes? It's just Popeyes. For a fucking chicken sandwich that you can go get at Chick-fil-A. Like seriously. Oh yeah, oh, my God. Oh, there's Chick-fil-A's all over the place in San Francisco. What the fuck is wrong with you? Hell yeah. Oh, they even deliver with like DoorDash and shit. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about, Sly. <laughs> and now the food porn section of the show. Pretty much. Yeah, you didn't you didn't play any MMOs at all till Final Fantasy 14 on PS4, did you? Pretty much. Well, I tried DCUO and didn't stick. Didn't honestly. stick. I'm, I, I was wondering if you were going to have any desire to see and s try to attempt to understand WoW Classic because I think it'd be I think you'd be fucking. Hilarious. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I've been saying, like I've told everybody, nostalgia is a hell of a drug. Otherwise, people there wouldn't be this many fucking cues for WoW Classic. I told people if SMT Imagine completed the the full translation, I would be on that shit for the same fucking reason. Nostalgia. But you're not curious about seeing what other people are nostalgic for. Yeah. I'm not even nostalgic for Vanilla WoW, to be honest. If this shit was Burning Crusade, I'd be way more excited. I'm not a big fan of Vanilla WoW. I'm not a big fan of fucking 30... And anyone who's played Classical Odyssey, I'm not a big fan of 30-second fucking blessings on Paladin. All right? I'm carrying around all these regents for my seals and shit. And auto-attacking. And Flash of Light. Flash of light, 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 flash of light. That's all I do. <laughs> That's it. That's the whole game for me. <laughs> Fucking holy paladin, man. Ugh, so my brain just needs to be stimulated from time to time. Yeah. So all I know is. I want to see how it pans out over the next several weeks and uh, how people start feeling as 14 moves into 5.1. Because, Sly, do we need to remind everyone what everything that happens in 5.1? You know, you get your month of WoW Classic out of the way. You know, you level your character. You get to whatever level. But then we get to 5.1. We've got main scenario quest. We've got potential Hildebrand. We've got near Automata. We've got Ultimate. we got the new EX Primal, Hades EX, which is something I'm looking forward to. we got Restoration of Ishgard. we got Blue Mage updates, which might sound meme -y, but I'm definitely going to fucking do them with the new four exclusive Blue Mage and hopefully Palace of the Dead fixed content. And apparently we've got reworks for Disciple of Hand and Land, that desynthesis shit that you reminded me of. I don't want to fucking remember these stupid mother. Anyway, yeah. So there's a lot loaded up in the in the canon for 5.1. And uh, some exciting times ahead. So. Yeah. Good times. And just in, I'm going to enjoy my WoW Classic for the time being. I'm going to beat those ghouls up. And then I'm going to be all set to go when 5.1 comes around. I'm going to have that fresh mindset that I can log in and do things. <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> well, except for that first day of the patch, you know, you're, you're going to, you're going to get it. Hey man, with how Shadowbringers went, I, I'm, I, I feel somewhat confident that it'll be okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm feeling all right at the very least, maybe a little bit of something, maybe because they don't prepare for it as much as launch, but we'll see instances are still around and that's, uh, that's yep. been a good sign so far. We'll see how long that yeah. actually lasts. 
But with that, mm-hmm. um, we've covered all the major topics. I really wanted to bring on a guest to talk about the lull between 14 stuff because dealing with auxiliary goals is something that a lot of people have a lot of different means of approaching, whether it be taking the September crazy game schedule or working on other stuff in 14. But next week and the following week, we have our schedule slide. Tuesday is Air Zivia, which we are going to get fucked on as we as we normally do. I think yep. you're going to win that first one. Ones. I've generally first one's usually horrible. First one's usually horrible for expansion, to be honest. What do you mean? I love that's my favorite Air Zivia. No, it's the ones after the first one that like, you know, it's the ones are... after the first one that you do better on. Mm hmm. These ones, the first one's always good. That's my favorite one because it's the largest influx of potential questions, I feel. That's why it's terrible. I love it because then Ethis gets to teach everyone more things. And Ethis has been doing a lot more YouTube content. So I'm even more excited for this because he's been really boning up on the actual lore content. So I think it's going to be a really, really good air Zivia that I'm, I'm, I, I don't feel confident at all I'm going to do well on, but... That's why people watch to be smarter than us. They do that every week, to be fair. So. To be fair. Yeah, it's kind of true. And then the following week, we're going to do the Friday show because that'll be after the live letter. This is the 14th. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because for us, it's on the. F- Actually, you know what? I don't think we can do that because I think it's the 14th at 9 p.m. So we might have to do a Saturday show that week unless we have something else. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure it's actually at like 9 p.m. my time. So it's, I think it's at like midnight your time. I'll reconfirm that right now. Might lag the stream because of the codec. I know that the 14 one. So yeah, um, 5.1, 9 p.m. Pacific. Yeah, it's at midnight on the 15th for you. I'm down. Okay, so Saturday. So that week's going to be a Saturday show. Listen, we got to do what we got to do, Sly. Sorry, Frosty. I mean, Frosty shows actually usually done by four anyway. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so we don't have to worry about that. So you have Gamer Escape at one, you have Frosty at two, and then you have us at four. Just means a busy day for anyone who watches 14 podcasts. It's going to be dope. I'll give Frosty the heads up and let him know that we're planning on doing that because I have a feeling his show will be very much about the same thing. Got to line up some guest ruse for that one, if we can. going to do that now. I'm going to ask Ethis. I'm going to ask Mary. We'll see if they're available for that Saturday or not. Or if they just want to sleep in. Well, Mary, it would be like 7 p.m., but I wouldn't. <laughs> you might have you know, someone want to sleep in. You never know. Huh. But with that slide, is there anything else you want to get off your chest before we wrap up this uh about 80 minute show we've got going here before zoom starts crapping out again no, i think i'm good i think i'm good i think you're good all yeah. right well with that ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us now because of the way the show started because we haven't done a show in a week and a half we did not do sponsors or patrons at the top of the show of course we have our patrons who i'm um, because my camera's reversed and in, in uh obs for some reason we have of course our patrons over there i've not updated that list for the next month that list will probably be seeing an update before tuesday but thank you to all those patrons who've been scrolling in the top right corner the entire time of course we have our patrons of darkness one of which provided a new picture but i actually do not think i have it ready i I, i'm gonna be i'm gonna level with you and everyone else sly i went to get ready for the show before you know we went live and it was about, you know, about two o'clock. I just finished eating lunch and then Aloha came in here and he started meowing and he hasn't been in here, which tells me he's having a good nap. And I went upstairs to lay down with him. So he like calms down, takes a nap. That's what he, he meows at me in the afternoon for that. And I passed out for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so I woke up at 3.23 and I usually call you at 3.30. And uh, I think you can probably <laughs> tell what actually ended up happening there. I uh yep. I may not have been awake to prepare everything for the show well enough in advance. But I'm pretty sure I still have this. Yeah. So Kuja actually gave us a very different image. He gave us uh, something he had commissioned, which was uh, Mm -hmm. almost like a Maple Story 2-esque version of uh, his Viera with uh, a fat cat at the beach. So that's one of our patrons of Darkness, Kuja Cross on Genova. Very different from the usual in-game screenshots we get. But the scariest fat cat I've ever seen in my life with an uwu face to boot. <laughs> or an owo. Sorry, that's an owo face. 
That is the fattest cat. That is the scariest and fattest of cats that you'll ever see in that commission art. So that's one of our patrons of Darkness Scooter Cross on Genova. And then right behind that, we of course still have Kerr and I who's still hanging out with Ethis. I really got to swap it to the slide picture again, to be honest. As much as slide doesn't seem to want it, it's okay. Yeah. Right, those, are, those are our patrons of uh, Darkness. So thanks to our patrons. And of course, all of you are used to hearing about Steel Series, our sponsor. Um, you know, they've been sponsoring giveaways for us for over a year, almost about a year and a half at this point, just free stuff. So in the YouTube comment section, be sure to enter the free giveaway there. And of course, if you're just looking to check out Steel Series stuff on Twitch chat, use exclamation mark Steel Series, save 10% with the discount code Mr. Happy 10. And YouTube, it's always in all the YouTube comment sections as well. So you guys are good to check that out. There's some other things that are going to be coming. Um, I actually did pick out a prize, but I, again, didn't prepare for the show at all. I still have a huge box of stuff Square Enix sent for giveaways. I have it. It's there. And I bring it up every week so you guys box. know that it's there. You still and it's, have that fucking box. It's physical giveaways. It's physical giveaways. Actually, you know what's... I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know where the post office is since I moved <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta go. I gotta go find that too before I can even really mail those out. I'm yeah. so glad I knocked mine out in one shot. Like it, it like that trip to the post office was fucking. Did you say two weeks ago you hated that you did that? I I hated it, but at the same time, like hearing that you still have yours, I'm like, the fuck? but that's just because oh, I'm God. lazy, Sly, and because I've been dealing with other stuff, you know, outside, you know, on stream and. You know, personal life. I took a vacation. It's just, it's been, I've been, I've been slow on the upkeep. All right. That's not, that's not because it's, I just, I just don't know. <laughs> that's all there really is to it. I do the Steel Series stuff and that I'm used to. There's also something else I'm going to be doing a little promotional video for, but I'll talk about that when I, uh, I'll actually, I'll bring it up here, but then I'm going to have to, I'm going to be doing a separate thing for it later. But with that, thank you to our sponsors, Patreon Steel Series. You guys all rock. And with that, Sly, why don't you tell everyone they can find you at? You can find me at twitch.tv slash Sly, a.k.a. Gray Fox. That's happy loose. Sly, a.k.a. Gray Fox. Um, Twitter at Sly the Fox. YouTube.com slash Velvet Room. September is what I like to call Hell Month. Um, we started today with some Catherine full body. We did the first uh, few nightmares. We will do the rest on Tuesday. Um, next week, also is Iceborne. There's going to be a lot of fucking Iceborne because I'm hyped for this shit. I need to get back to the demo so I can beat Vulcana. Um, what else? There's Borderlands 3. There's AI The Somnium Files, which is the new murder mystery from Spike Chunsoft uh, from the developers of Danganronpa and Zero Escape. Uh, there's uh, fuck. Demon X Machina, which is like Animu, uh, Animu uh, almost at front mission, Armored Core. Um, there's Kurt Vein, but I won't be able to play it until after TwitchCon because I'll be at TwitchCon. So we'll stole heat. Uh, but yeah, there, there's a lot of shit in September. So this is a good time for a fucking lull. So please look forward to it. Hi, please come hunt monsters with me. I, I would love that if you're on PS4. Uh, happy. How's your hell month going to be? And where can they find you? So I don't even know where my how my hell month's gonna be exactly just yet. But you can find me, Mr. Happy One Two Two Seven, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, YouTube, and Instagram. I haven't really decided because at this point I'm kind of overwhelmed with September to the point where it's like I feel like I'm just gonna deliberately cut some things out so I don't have because I know I won't finish them. Like I just know I will not put the time in to finish them. So Final Fantasy VIII Remaster is one. Iceborne is one. Um, and then after that, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Like I'll do a little bit of Borderlands Three, but I don't know how much of Borderlands Three I'm gonna finish because that i'm i have i have serious concerns over the amount of hours i'm going to be pouring into uh, across everything across the board so though some of those things are still very much up in the air for me so we'll we'll see how that actually ends up working out um one thing i still got to do because i haven't really made much in the way of youtube videos the past couple weeks um i'm actually going to be doing um a, a sponsored video for a little bit of unofficial screen experts it's kind of hard to see in the uh in the video here but uh they're job stones basically it's a company that does custom made job stones and they do it for other games like legend of zelda and stuff like that and they sent me some free stuff so i want to do a video showing off some of the free stuff unfortunately it's not showing super well in here my lighting's not very great but I, they sent me like gunbreaker job stone key, uh keychains and a, a dancer one as well which of course is going to be the one that i keep next to my desk 
Uh, but yeah, so expect to see something like that. There's even, you know, look, they got the Jobstone necklace too. Oh, yeah. It doesn't fit over my headset, unfortunately. So I'm just going to do that. <laughs> no, it could be there. It could be like that. There, see? It could be like the head thing. Just it's an accessory for that. It just won't fit over my headset. So It's an Alan Megan headpiece. It's an Alan Megan headpiece with, with the dancer symbol on it. So I wanted to do a quick shout out for that because I actually did get that in here. I'll include a link to that as well in the in the thing because i've been slow on the upkeep on youtube for everything as of late just because i've had like ever since so before vegas i was like super excited to take a vacation since vegas i've been fucked like i've gotten sick like every other day like i had post days will drip last night so this morning was fucking hell then i passed out in the afternoon because i was tired then i'm not sleeping well at night so i've been it's been awful for me for like off hours like when i'm not streaming so I'm trying to just unwind and relax a little bit. So I want, figured that because I'm not sure when I'll get that done for this video, I figured I might as well throw a quick shout out in State of the Realm on uh, Out of Good Faith because they, uh, they went out of their way to send me these quick things. But I'll also do a small little video about them as well. With that, Sly. Oh, oh shit. Forgot. Speaking of Vegas, fuck, forgot about this. If uh, tonight, if you are on Primal, um, Allure Lounge on Ultras is having a Vegas night. Uh, last week, I think the theme was the beach. Tonight's Vegas. So come to uh, the Allure Lounge on Ultras. Uh, God damn it. I usually have the plot and everything. Mal, are you in chat? Um, but yeah, it's in the um, Lavender Beds. Ward 9 plot 33, if I'm correct. But yeah, somewhere around there. Um, sorry, Allure. But yeah, if you're on if you're on Primal, just come to Ultras. Come dress sharp, you know, because it's Hurry Vegas. and log on, Sly. You have my clothes. Sly, you want to comment on that? She mailed me clothes to send back to her. I don't know why. Ebony, why did you send me your clothes? I don't know. But yeah, even still. Ward 9, Plot 33, Lavender Beds on Ultras. Uh, Vegas night tonight gonna be fun allure is always a fun place if you've never been it is such a treat um i'm definitely you know show up and join their discord follow them on twitter all the things so please look forward to it hi and i think with that that is everything unless uh happy had anything else all I'll say is what happens in vegas stays on ultros i guess <laughs> there you go there you go on that note, we're going to wrap things up, go into a short post show, and then I'm going to hopefully recover from that nap because that nap made me super fucking tired. <laughs> now I don't know. What I'll get this rendered and everything. Recover or just go the fuck to sleep? I don't know, man. I can't fall asleep at night. I get tired in the middle of the day. I'm, 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 well, I can fall asleep at night, but I don't sleep very soundly. Whether it be Aloha just bugging the shit out of me at night or I just like roll over and can't sleep. Mel got me this nice new, for our anniversary, she got me this nice new blanket that traps in cool air. And so it gets my skin the whole, it's, it's like, it's like the cold side of the pillow all night. Damn. That's, and that's, <laughs> that's what I want. Cold side of the pillow all uh, night. And it feels amazing. Night. And then I, I can get one of those sleep. bulky pillows. Yeah. There you go. But anyway, that's going to be a wrap. We're going to move on into a short post show on Tuesday. Prepare to watch Sly and I look stupid on Air Zivia. That's what the plan is. Ethis already confirmed it. So we'll see you for that show. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in this week. And we'll see you. Ethis doesn't have to confirm us looking stupid. We do that. Like, I meant he confirmed he can do Tuesday and he'll be ready for Air Zivia. Okay. I asked him I asked him this last Tuesday when he wanted to do it. And he said next Tuesday was fine. So yeah. there you go. So tune in for that. We'll see you then. And until then, take care. See you next week. For us to look stupid.